with rigid wedges and under productivity shocks. The model is able, the machine model is able to explain why uh, we have uh, procyclical labor market tightness, procyclical vacancy rate, counter cyclical unemployment rate. Now the question is under this in this model and under the assumption of the rigid wage, can we generate fluctuations in unemployment? So we know those fluctuations in unemployment are going in the right direction. In bad times, there's a lot of unemployment. In good times, there is little unemployment. But now the question is, can we generate the type of amplitude that we see in the data? Um, and so in particular, um, if you look at uh, some of my work that I've assigned as a reading, And if you look in particular at page um, 1741, what you will see is that um, the elasticity, which is a key measure we're looking at, the elasticity of theta, the labor market tightness, with respect to um, productivity. is, so we denote it by epsilon for an elasticity, theta with respect to A is equal to roughly uh, 8. Okay, um, so what that means is that, so that's going to be, uh, that's going to be our key target here. So what that means is that, in terms of interpretation, when productivity goes up by 1%, tightness goes up by 8%. So that's quite a big amplification of the shock. So a shock is going to be multiplied by any shock of productivity will be multiplied by 8 in terms of tightness. And if you look at the paper along the same, you'll see that if you want a little bit more detail, uh, two other results kind of uh, that are also there uh, is that we'll also see that the <coughs> elasticity. So, you know, if tightness goes up a lot when productivity goes up, it can be easier because uh, vacancies are going up or unemployment is going down, or both. And in fact, we see that in the data, both movements in vacancies and unemployment contribute almost equally to variations in tightness. So in fact, the elasticity of the unemployment rate with respect to uh, productivity is epsilon ua is about four, and the elasticity of V, the vacancy rate with respect to productivity A is epsilon V and is also about equal to 4. So it means that um, fluctuations in unemployment and fluctuations in vacancies they contribute almost equally to the fluctuations in uh, tightness. But you know, for now, uh, so of course in our model when tightness moves, we've seen that under productivity shock when tightness goes up, vacancy goes up, unemployment goes down, so we have that right, but now the question is can we get fluctuations in tightness that are as large as what we see, so an elasticity of about uh, 8. So what we are going to do, so the, the question is uh, can we get, can we generate an elasticity of tightness with respect to productivity A? of 8 in matching model and here we are looking in particular with um, rigid <coughs> wages. So that's the question. Okay, so and to be able to answer this question we'll be able we'll have to derive using the theoretical model the elasticity of tightness with respect to productivity. So we'll have to do that. That will require quite a bit of algebra, uh, but there are a lot of useful techniques that are involved in computing that elasticity. Um, so, um, you know, you have to buckle up a little bit, but uh, it, it's quite a useful exercise. 
So where do we start from to get that elasticity? So first we have to figure out where tightness comes from in the model and it comes from the equilibrium condition. So we'll start from that. Let's start from our equilibrium condition. The equilibrium condition says that labor supply at theta is equal to labor demand at theta. Okay. Now if we plug in um, our expression for labor supply and labor demand. What do we get? So we get that f of theta divided by s is f of theta times h is equal to. Uh, so we said that we use a rigid wedge, so here we have alpha a minus gamma omega. 1 plus tau of theta alpha 1 over 1 minus alpha. Okay, so this is what we have, and so as you can see this equation implicitly it's going to so you have a here for activity, and then you have tightness here, tightness here, tightness here. So implicitly, that equation defines a uh, you know. Uh, tightness as a function of A, the productivity. So theta uh, is an implicit function of A through that equation. And formally, you know, there's something called the implicit function theorem. Uh, that shows that when you have an equation with a parameter um, that defines a variable, then that variable is a function can be you know, inter can be interpreted as a function of the parameter. Um, so you can um, look that up to get a more formal statement here. You can look up the implicit function theorem. Okay, um, so, but now the question is, so we have this function, uh, and so what we want is to compute the elasticity of theta with respect to A, and so how is that defined? That's d log theta divided by d log A, okay? So we want to compute the derivative of the function log of theta with respect to the argument uh, log of A. Uh, 